Hello everyone. The next expansion Legion is almost upon us. And with the Harbinger episodes, with the Tuma Sagaris audio drama, and of course, the pre-patch coming up, there's plenty of things to cover leading into the story that's going to unfold in Legion. With that in mind, I have a few videos planned to cover it bit by bit, and in this one, we're going to take a look at how it all began. So sit back, relax, and I hope you enjoy. At the end of Mr. Pandaria, Garrosh Hellscream was placed on trial for his crimes against the world. The Black Dragon Raphion, together with the Bronze Dragon Kairo Stormu, they make plans to break Garrosh out of jail and send him back in time to an alternate reality. Raphion has seen a vision of the Legion coming to try and claim Azeroth once more, and he wants Garrosh to form the Horde and have that Horde help us out. Kairos drops the hourglass called Vision of Time on the floor, a portal to alternate Draenor's created, and he, together with Garrosh, they make their escape. This alternate Draenor is very similar to the Draenor that we knew, but it also had a fair few differences. For example, alternate Garrosh was never born, Rilkan, Nerzul's mate, she's still alive, and even the path of alternate Gul'dan is similar, yet different. This Gul'dan was born a cripple. Mockery and dismissal was all his clan ever showed him. No one living has heard of the village of my past. He was cast out, but the Elder Shaman showed him pity, told him that he always saw a greater destiny for Gul'dan, and that he should seek out the throne of the elements. Gul'dan did just that, but even the elements abandoned him. In their absence, other voices started whispering. The Legion had found the harbinger of their fury, and never again would Gul'dan grovel for his place in this world. He had found his destiny, and with the Legion at his side, he would forge a world that would grovel before him. No one living has heard of the village of my birth, and no one ever will. Except, unfortunately for this Gul'dan, our Garrosh put a stop to those plans. Even though Kairos and Raphion, they envisioned him being obedient and forming a horde to follow their orders, he wasn't willing to be controlled like that. After murdering Kairos Dormu, he did set off to form the horde, the Iron Horde as they called it, not to help out Azeroth fight against the coming legion, but instead to help him get his revenge and conquer the planet. Garrosh informed Gromash about Gul'dan's true plans, about his allegiance to the legion, and what it would mean for the orc if they accepted this so-called gift. Drink, Hellstream. Claim your destiny. You will all be conquerors. And what, Gul'dan, must we give in return? Everything. Gromash refuses this gift, the demon blood of the Pit Lord Manoroth, and as Garrosh predicted, the Pit Lord shows himself. A great battle follows, Manoroth is brought low, and Garrosh changed the future of the orcs. <coughs> this was not our destiny. Times change. Gromash leaves the Iron Horde, with Garrosh and the other warlords at his side. Now Gul'dan and his Shadow Council, they're placed in chains as their powers are used to fuel the Dark Portal, connecting it to our Azeroth and turning it red. The Iron Horde has come to claim our world, but Azeroth has been forged in the fires of war and it does not surrender easily. In fact, they push the Iron Horde back, they step through the portal itself and they take the battle to alternate Draenor. We quickly disable the portal to keep Azeroth safe, but by doing so, we also release a very powerful and very dangerous orc. Do not delay, mortal. I can feel the life essence of your armies fading. There will be time for regret later. We will meet again. 
there's no time to worry about it now, since the might of the Iron Horde is gathered, and they're pissed at us. So we make our escape as we run through Tanan jungle, and Gul'dan is a problem for another time. Mainly throughout the legendary questline, as we focused our efforts against the Iron Horde, Ketgar kept us focused on the threat of Gul'dan. As we bring sweet justice to Garrosh and step by step dismantle the Iron Horde, Gul'dan sees the opportunity and he offers the Demon Blood again. Gromash is wise enough to still refuse, but many of the orcs, they did accept it this time, allowing Gul'dan to take control and push forward with his initial plans. He summons powerful agents of the Legion, even Archimonde himself shows up to fight, but none of them are able to defeat us, yet Gul'dan and the Legion, they're not so easily stopped. Gul'dan! You made a pact. Think it's over. Gul'dan and the devils that command him are not so easily banished. I fear this is only beginning. If you ever need us, we will be here. <laughs> Until we meet again. Archmage Ketgar doesn't believe it's over quite yet, and he would be right. Gul'dan made a pact with the Legion for untold power, with the promise that he would raise a Fel'infused army and use that army to invade and burn Azeroth to the ground. This means that the Legion isn't quite done with him yet, so they sent him to our Azeroth, where now it's killed Jaden, giving him the orders, his voice rattling in his mind. <laughs> He is told to make his way to the Broken Isles, towards the Tomb of Sargeras. So Gul'dan, he steals a merchant vessel and he sets sail, all the while being pursued by Ketgar. The Archmage is powerful and he's been able to study Gul'dan for a very long time, but the Warlock is no easy prey. He stacked the corpses of the adults who were on the ship and he used the children as a living shield. This prevented Ketgar from striking out at him and one single spark of Fellfire, it set the ship ablaze. Gul'dan was able to slip away and hide in the shadows, but Ketgar is not the only threat on the Broken Isles. He spots Wardamaya's Shadow Song and her Watchers as Ketgar meets up with them and he tries to recruit their help in tracking down Gul'dan. Maiev is pretty pissed at Ketgar. She had sent one of her Watchers, Kordana Felsong, to assist him upon Draenor. Her initial reports about the Archmage were not positive and after just a few months at his side, she turned traitor and allied herself with Gul'dan and the Legion. Why is that, Ketgar? What is it about you that drove her straight to the Burning Legion? Those that played during Warlords of Draenor, they might remember Cordana being at Ketgar's side. Together, they tried to stop Gul'dan, and during these efforts, Ketgar eventually used the Orb of Dominion to break the spells placed on Garona's mind and free her from Gul'dan's control. But Cordana, she doesn't trust the dark powers that the Archmage is playing with, and she tells him to hand over the Orb, and she'll destroy the hideous thing. Instead, this opened her up to Gul'dan's corruption, and next time that we see her, she's working for him and war us that Azeroth will burn. Very well. Walk away. Nothing will stop Gul'dan, for the Legion stands behind him. Mark my words, your leaders will betray you. Azeroth will burn. Some of you also asked, what about Maiev? What happened to her character and story? 
During the novel Wolfhearts, Melfiore and Antaranda, they're working on bringing back the Highborn and magic into their society. Maiev had spent thousands of years guarding Illidan, preventing someone like Illidan to mess around with magic and possibly summon the Legion again, so you might imagine that she wasn't too pleased with this idea. She went as far as to execute some of the Highborn, she planned to kill Malfurion, and in the end, it was her brother, Jared Shadowsong, who confronted her and saved the day. He wasn't able to strike down his sister in that moment, she made her escape, and it seemed like Maiev was placed in the path of becoming an enemy. But it also seems like they had a change of heart and they wanted to bring Maiev back into the story as a proper warden. It makes sense if you consider her connection to Illidan, Illidan making a return, you can't tell that story without Maiev. But it's also a bit of a shame that they just tossed that character development out of the window. Either way, it is what it is. Kedgar is now trying to convince Maiev to help him with stopping Gul'dan, since she knows about the Tomb of Sargeras. She's been there before, but she doesn't agree with him. If Gul'dan is truly there on the Broken Isles, then there's no power left for him to collect within the tomb. Part of it was taken by Ner'zhul, and the rest was taken by Illidan, now stored away in his body. So if anything, it would be Illidan's prison, the Vault of the Wardens, where Gul'dan would go. Ketgar tries to make her see reason. The Legion would not send Gul'dan on a fool's errand. They had tried to make a gateway for the Legion there before, and they would try to do it again. Warden Shadowsong is unmoved. She makes up her mind, and they go to the Vault. <sighs> So be it. As he transforms into a raven again, and he flies off the Gul'dan. In the meantime, as much as Gul'dan wanted to strike from the shadows, take the opportunity to get rid of Maiev and Khadgar, Kil'jaeden ordered him to step away and focus on reaching the tomb. Being forced to obey like a little dog hurts Gul'dan's pride more than he could imagine. It wasn't his fault that the Legion's plans had failed on Draenor. He had even managed to summon Archimonde, and yet it was the Legion that was unable to hold their ground. Dark thoughts of betrayal entered his mind, but for now, he had to obey. So he turned away from the Archmage and the Warden, he found a little boat, he empowered it with fell magic, and he sent himself across towards the Isle of Taldrenov and the Tomb of Sargeras. That's how the audio drama describes it at least, but if you already know that the tomb in-game is in a different location, and Taldrenov, it's been scrapped for supposedly something better. I think this change comes down to Blizzard changing their minds in between, and simply not updating the story for the audio drama, but it could also be a different reason, I don't know. Now this is also a good moment to talk a little bit about the history of the tomb, since it is very important for the rest of the story. The Tomb of Sargeras was not always named the Tomb of Sargeras. Once it was part of the ancient night elven city of Sudamar, and during the War of the Ancients, the Legion tried to open another gateway within Sudamar itself. Their plans were foiled by a group of highborn, not willing to work with the Queen of Jara or the Legion, and they were led by Grand Magistrix Alessandre. These powerful sorcerers created a series of enchanted seals to close the demon's portal and also negate nearby fell energies. When the Sundering eventually did happen, when the War of the Ancients was over and the land of Kalimdor split apart, the part of Sudamara containing the Legion's filled gateway, it was sucked beneath the waves. This happened around 10,000 years ago, now around 823 years before the Dark portal opened up, there was a guardian of the world called Agewin. The guardian is meant to protect the world, mainly from threats like the Legion, and she sensed a powerful darkness within the icy lands of Northrend. There, a pack of demons summoned the avatar of Sargeras into the world, not the real complete Sargeras, but his avatar, holding a tiny portion of his vast cosmic powers. Agewin did not hesitate to fight back. She unleashed her formidable guardian powers upon the avatar, and despite all odds, she was able to defeat it. What the Guardian didn't realize was that the spirit of Sargeras, it made use of her weakened state and it infiltrated her body, lurking within the depths of her soul. Now to seal away the Avatar, to make sure that it could harm no one else, Edwin chose to use these ancient Highborn ruins. Knowing that the Highborn seals would nullify whatever evil still lingered in Sargeras' Avatar, she buried the Demon's Lord's broken body within the sunken portion of Sudamar and she protected it with magical wards able to resist the demons. Edwin hoped Sargeras' remains would lie undisturbed there until the end of time, if only the world would have been so lucky. The spirit of Sargeras inside of her, it started to twist her mind, and when she gave birth to her son Medivh, a darkness unknown to all was already inside the child. The demon lord had possessed the infant while he formed in her womb, and the fallen titan had found the perfect instrument with which to begin the Legion's next invasion of Azeroth. Agewin handed over the guardian powers to her son, Medivh became the new guardian, yet the darkness within him, it took control and it led to the first horn invasion of Azrael. The time has come! Gul'dan, order your warlocks to double their efforts! Moments from now, the gateway will open, and your horde will be released upon this ripe, unsuspecting world. 
it was Medivh, under the influence of Sargeras, that made contact with our Gul'dan, showed him the world of Azeroth, and he opened the door for the orcs to come in. Now Kedkar became the apprentice of Medivh, and he eventually figured out what was going on, that Sargeras was inside his mentor, and that Medivh was the one who had let the orcs into their world. He confronted Medivh, together with Enduin Lothar and Garona half orc and he stabbed the corrupted guardian, and Sargeras started to manifest. Lofar chopped off the heads before he could fully materialize, and that took care of the threat coming from Medivh. But the Horde, it was already on the planet, and the war between the Alliance and Horde would play out. Stormwind would fall, the survivors traveled to Lordaeron, the Alliance was formed, and they started to fight back. In the meantime, our Gul'dan was dealing with some problems of his own, since Orgrim Doomhammer, he did not agree with the path that the Warlock had placed him on, and he took control of the Horde. Gul'dan was all about finding more power. He did not care about his honor or his people, so in a critical moment during the war, he left them all behind in search for more power. He had found out about the tomb of Sargeras, a place containing that delicious power for him to claim. So he used his magic to raise the tomb out of the water below, and he ventured inside. Strange. These are orcish runes. They were written by Gul'dan when he first opened this tomb 20 years ago. What do they say? Apparently he logged his journey through the tomb's depths. These runes seem to depict that history. Quickly, you fools! Fan out and search for the primary passageway! We must reach the Chamber of the Eye before the tomb's guardians awaken! Spineless cowards! I said move! Now, Sargeras, I will claim whatever's left of your power and bring this wretched world to its knees. There's no telling what Gul'dan and his lackeys awoke in this foul place. We must be cautious. There. More of Gul'dan's glyphs. Interesting. They continue the Warlock's tale. Blasted, feeble-minded weaklings. They're all likely dead by now. Still, I must press on. My power alone should be enough to... <laughs> Is that you, Sargeras? You seek to mock me? We'll see who laughs last, demon, when I claim your burning eye for my own. Look, mistress. More of Gul'dan's glyphs. Yes, Gul'dan's script seems to grow more desperate. It reads that he was... Ambushed by the Guardians. I am... Dying. If my servants had not abandoned me, I could have claimed the eye and... Damn you, Sargeras. I won't be beaten like this. I am Gul'dan. I am darkness incarnate. It cannot end like this. This is as far as he got. The runes simply trail off. I cannot imagine what horrors Gul'dan faced in his final moments. The Legion does not like being betrayed like that. He was meant to exterminate all resistance on Azeroth for the Legion, and instead he focused on his own lust for power. Demons from the tomb itself tore him limb from limb, and the plans of the Legion had failed. Gul'dan's betrayal led to the horse defeats, Azeroth's resistance held strong, and the stored power within the tomb, the gateway that they tried to make all the way back during the War of the Ancients, it slumbered, waiting, and now alternate Gul'dan has been sent on the pot by Kil Jaden to do what he was meant to do. What will you have me do? You will open the way for us. This is what the other Gul'dan was meant to do. What happened? You failed your purpose. That was not me, he growled. We will see. <sighs> How did he fail? Disloyalty. Will this good end succeed where the other has not? That's the tale we'll save for next week, where we'll continue on the journey towards the story of Legion and talk about all the little things that happened before the expansion actually takes off. 
for now. Thank you very much for watching everyone. Subscribe if you like my videos. Leave a like if you enjoyed this one. And until next time guys. See ya.